17 years ago, I ended up getting my real estate license. Yes, 17 years ago. Isn't that wild? While I got my real estate license, I was actually teaching elementary school at the time. My husband and I had just purchased our first home. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, this process was amazing. Like I loved everything really from start to finish. And I remember thinking, man, you know, I've got some long summers off. I've got at least 10 weeks off at least every summer, not to mention all the different breaks that I have in between. So my wheels got turning and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get my real estate license and I can't wait to do not only teaching, but then I'm going to do real estate part-time. However, I wish I'm telling you, I wish I would have known these few things before I ended up getting my real estate license, because honestly, I know lots of people are like, oh, I got my real estate license. And then all of a sudden I had 30 deals my first year. And that was not me. And I will tell you my story. I will tell you a little bit about how, you know, how things ended up going, but I'm also going to share with you three things that I wish I would have known. So I wouldn't have felt so discouraged. So I would have had more success in those for, you know, that first decade. And we're going to hop into it right now. Mariah Curla here. Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm a licensed and active luxury real estate agent in both California and here in Utah. And this channel is literally everything you need to know about building and scaling your business the modern way by leveraging the power of social media. If that is of interest to you, consider subscribing down below and make sure you tap that bell for notifications. So you are notified every week I drop a new video. I hear from people like you all the time who are either looking to build, looking to scale their business the modern way, or really just looking to get into real estate. And I absolutely love it. So feel free to send me an email, shoot me a text or give me a ring. And I would love to connect with you. So it doesn't feel like that long ago that I got my real estate license, even though it has been 17 years, I know 17 years, I can't even hardly believe it myself. But like I mentioned before, I was an elementary teacher. My husband and I had just bought our first home and I literally love the process really from start to finish. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, what do I need to do to become a real estate agent? Because I want in on this because this was actually a ton of fun. So I ended up getting my real estate license. I really like in my mind, I kind of thought, okay, great. I'm going to be teaching full time. And then I've got my summers. I've got my weekends. I've got all these different, you know, I've got a lot of time off as a teacher as well. So I'm going to use that time off to be able to build my real estate business. I ended up hanging my license at a small little boutique brokerage. Um, the benefits of that is that I was paying a small fee every month. I was given a box of business cards and then I was kind of just left to my own, right? Never having built a business myself, I didn't know what to do. So I started just kind of like, you know, doing a little research here and there. When I ended up getting my license, I actually had to go to a classroom. They did not have the online classes that they have now. So I went, I sat, I did all the, you know, did all the classes, hung my license with the boutique brokerage, and then literally kind of sat there and went, okay, so what's next? Like, does my name go on some kind of list of real estate agents that are around? Did not know how to get this thing off the ground and running because I was at this small boutique brokerage, there was this much support. Yes, this much support. I remember meeting with the broker when I walked in and that was pretty much the last time that I ever spoke to my broker. And I just remember thinking like, gosh, there's got to be more help. There's gotta be some more support. There's gotta be more training. Like, I mean, how do I even, I don't, I don't know what I don't know. Right? So fast forward many, many, many years. I, I, I didn't tell people that I was even in real estate. Like I just thought, Oh, you know, I'm an elementary teacher and then I'll just pick stuff up as I go along. I wish I would have known that there are other brokerages, that there are brokerages out there that will give you mentorship, that there are brokerages out there that will teach and train and coach that have hours and hours and hours each week that can actually help and support you. And literally like if you need somebody to just kind of like hold your hand through, there are brokerages out there that will do that for you. So there are brokerages that will literally help you from start to finish. I personally was not at a brokerage like that. So a couple years later, I ended up switching over to more of a flat fee brokerage. And I remember thinking like, okay, you know, I'm at this flat fee brokerage. I'm, you know, not paying much 
but I'm also not getting much either. I remember they had some like new agent trainings and I would go to the new agent training and I would still have to pay, you know, the 150 or $200 to attend the brokerages training. And I remember thinking like, gosh, this is strange. Like, I know I'm not, you know, I'm paying $60 a month to like hold my license there, but I'm not really getting anything in return. Like this just seems so strange. And when I'd go to the office, I remember asking like, oh, you know, hey, how, you know, how do you do this or this? And it was very kind of like closed off as if, um, you know what, I can't help you with that because I'm working on my own stuff. And me being a teacher in that teacher community world, it was, I, I was always at schools that everybody was very collaborative, where if I pulled out something in my file and somebody walks in and says, oh, I love that project. Can I have a copy of that? I'd say, yeah, of course. Great. Here's, here's the master copy. Take it, make a copy. Just put it back in there when you're done. Great. It was not like that. So number one, I did not realize that all brokerages are not created equal. I know that sounds silly, but they are not created equal. Starting at the boutique brokerage, I had very little support and training. Going to the flat fee brokerage, I realized, okay, you know, it's kind of every man for himself. I'm still not paying a lot, but I'm not getting a lot either. Then I moved to a larger brokerage, a brokerage that is known for its teaching, its coaching, its support. And I remember I, you know, I went in and I, you know, I got some good training and I got some good support, but it was also still very dependent on your performance. So if, you know, the big performers at the brokerage, they would have what we call like the sweetheart deal, where a lot of times they are going to be paying not the same amount that I would be paying. So at that point I was paying a 60, 40 split. They were paying maybe a 90, 10 split they capped at a different number than I capped at. And so I just remember thinking like, wait a second, there's kind of a lot of inequality here. They don't particularly like that. Um, a lot of the trainings you had to go in, you know, actually all of the trainings you had to go into the office, which was just fine. But for me, it was about a 20 minute commute away from my home. So I remember thinking, gosh, it would be nice to be able to do this while I'm still driving carpool and my kids, but then I can also be listening to the meetings. So I didn't have that fit there. So I started looking for another brokerage. I ended up finding the brokerage that I'm currently at. Some people have asked which brokerage I'm at eXp Realty. I realized that at eXp Realty, everybody has the same cap, same split, same cut, everything like that, which I thought I like that. Next, the training, the training, there are, you know, 70 plus hours of training within the brokerage and they are top by top producers. Yes, top producers. You're not gonna have the top producer that's just at your brokerage, but you are going to have top producers that are all over the country. So number one, not all brokerages are you know created equal and you need to be able to find a brokerage that is going to best support your needs. So if you are looking for more lead generation, there are going to be brokerages that can help you with that. If you are looking to have a, you know, a stock portfolio for yours, you are going to have, there's going to be brokerages that can support you in that. If you are looking for a lot of teaching and training and support, there are brokerages for that. So number one, not all brokerages are created equal. And if you haven't found one that works for you, I know for me where I'm at, I have loved it. It's been a phenomenal fit for me. Feel free to reach out, you know, send me a, send me a text, give me a call and we can chat about mine. But if you haven't found the right one, just know there are a lot out there. Next up, number two, I wish I would have known that real estate is a long-term game. Yes, it is a long-term career. It's a long-term play. A lot of people that think that when they get into real estate, they're thinking, oh, okay, you know what? I, you know, I saw this person and they just made this amount of money. And you know, if I do this, then I'm going to be able to do the same thing. A lot of people get into real estate with unrealistic expectations. Yes, unrealistic expectations. And they think that, you know, in a month, in two, in three months from now, that they will be able to build this business. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot, but what I'm saying is know that it is more of a long-term game than a short-term game. Typically, you know, obviously if you are selling a home, that normal transaction is going to be about 30 days. So even if day one, you hang your license with a broker, a broker, you have a client by the time they end up finding a home or by the time you end up selling that home, depending on what market you could be in, 
it could be 45 days out. It could be 60 days out. It could be 90 days out. It could be way longer than that. Even if you had a client from day one. So just know that usually it's going to be a longer term play than a shorter term play. So if you're thinking, Hey, I need a paycheck like yesterday, real estate, you might want to do something else in the meantime, while you're ramping up your business, because that first paycheck that you get probably won't be for six months or eight months, or it could even be a year before you get that first client, that first paycheck. So a lot of times I like to say that you are kind of building your pipeline, that you, as soon as you get into real estate, you want to let people know that you're in real estate. You want to let them know, you know, what kind of services you provide and just get your name out there and start networking, start communicating, start really just whatever it is that you are interested in the real estate aspect. If you are more interested in investors, go that route. If you are more interested in first time home buyers or the luxury home market or whatever it is, relocation, you are going to want to try and niche down on one of one of those avenues. You can do several of them, but if you kind of put your focus toward one, then you are going to become more of an expert in that area and you are going to build that what I call a pipeline business. So you're going to start meeting people in that you know particular niche and then as time goes on, you are going to be finding that people will start reaching out to you. So for me, I work with a lot of investors and I work with a lot of people who are relocating. Yes, relocating. So for me, a lot of times people will reach out and they're saying, Hey, you know what? I'm thinking about making a move to Utah, but not for another six months. I've got, you know, a six month, my, you know, my kids are finishing up school here. We've got about six more months. I'm taking a job in about six months. So for mine, mine is more of that long-term play because I'm building these relationships and those relationships you know, end up turning into clients and those clients are not planning on purchasing or relocating for many months out. So if you start developing all those relationships long term, it's going to play out very nicely for you, but just know that it is more of a long term game, like I said. So long term is number two. And number three, last but not least, is consistency with marketing and branding. Yes, consistency, consistency, consistency with marketing and branding. Whatever direction you decide to go, be consistent on it. I have been an athlete my whole life and I played soccer in college and after that, and I always, you know, I kind of go back to those kind of sports analogies, if you will. And I think about, I've run several marathons before and that first mile is always the hardest in my opinion because you're just you're getting going right but once you show up for that first mile guess what the second mile usually feels a little bit easier and then by the time you've got your third mile now now you're kind of in a rhythm your breathing's right everything's kind of you know you're you're kind of in that flow state and as you know the marathon pro progresses you become more within like i said that flow state the same thing goes with your real estate business. The first part is always the hardest because you're getting started. And sometimes people feel like they're just like throwing darts at a dart bar and like, I don't know, maybe I'll try this. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll try this. Oh, my friend said that they did this. So I'm going to try that. Here's my bet. Like, here's my recommendation. It not, things are not going to feel comfortable at first just because you've never done it, but pick something that you feel like you can be consistent at. Yes. Pick something that you feel like, you know what? It's not going to be a chore to do this every single day, that there's actually going to be some excitement or creativity or whatever it is that you are going to be able to do every day. So this is what I always say. I remember when I first got in the business and people said, you need to cold call and you need to door knock. Like those are the two ways that you are really going to generate a lot of business. Hence why I, you know, literally did not do anything for years and years because I thought, oh my gosh, I, I don't want a cold call. I don't want a door knock. Like I, I, that, like there was a major fear with that years ago, just thinking about like, what would that look like? What would I say? What, how would they respond? That the fear was so paralyzing that I couldn't be consistent because I wasn't even showing up on day one. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, I wasn't even showing up for work on day one because I didn't cold call and I didn't door knock. 
it wasn't until that for me personally, I found social media that I could be consistent. I could be consistent posting on Instagram because I was in control of it. I knew what, you know, I had my game plan of what I wanted to do. I had my content calendar. I knew I could batch having taught for many years. I knew that like, it, it kind of looked, you know, in my mind, like a lesson plan where I'm like, okay, this is what you do first. This is what you do second. This is what you do third. And so I basically just follow the recipe. I follow the, the lesson plan and it's worked out you know, marvelously, very, very well for me because I found something that I enjoy. I found something that I can use my creativity with, and I found something that I've been able to brand myself and that I have been able to show up consistently now, not only day after day, but week after week and month after month and year after year by following kind of a recipe, a formula that has worked for me, that has brought in, brought in lots and lots of clients over the years because I'm able to stay consistent. So whatever it is for you, it might be blogging. It might be, you know, something with email marketing. It might be farming your neighborhood, a neighborhood that you live in. And perhaps you are sending out newsletters. It might be that you are throwing events within your community. Maybe you love doing events. Maybe you, you know, that's something that you, you know, really can get behind and you can be consistent with. Maybe it is door knocking, or maybe it is cold calling, or maybe it, you know, whatever it is for you, pick a couple things that you feel like you can lean in on and that you can be consistent with and pick one and start doing it. And once you start doing that one over and over and over and again, you're going to realize that you can add in something else. So for me personally, I started with Instagram and I went, okay, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Once I got into Instagram, I realized, oh, okay, I, you know, I've got this. So then I added in, here we are, YouTube. I added in YouTube into my repertoire. So now I have like the Instagram going and now I've got the YouTube going. I ended up going on TikTok and Facebook and blogging and I've got my website. And so everything, it started from one thing. And once I got the hang of one thing, then I leaned into the next. And once I got the hang of that one, then I leaned into the next one. So whatever you decide to do, just go into it consistently and consistently show up. But here's my piece. Here's a piece of advice for you too. If you go all in with something and you realize four months, five months, six months down the road that nothing is happening, you are not gaining anything, then you may want to switch it up. But remember, like I said before, it is a long-term game. So if you give up in two months, three months, because you haven't seen results, it hasn't been consistent enough. So these three things, honestly, when I was getting started, I wish I would have known that this is more of a long-term play. I wish I would have known that not all brokerages are created equal, that different brokerages offer different things to their agent. If you're not getting the help and support that you need, find something different. I know, like I said, I have been super happy at my brokerage. If you have questions about mine, feel free to, you know, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I would love to chat. And then, like I said before, whatever it is with your branding and your consistency, keep showing up, keep showing up. I promise you, if you do these three things, really lean into those different things that you will have success. And really, and the last one, I didn't even mention this is really just a determination. Like don't give up. There are going to be people that say, oh, you can't do it. There's going to be, you know, deals that go sideways. If you keep showing up for work, you will be able to build this business. You will be able to scale it. And if you are looking to build and scale the modern way by leveraging the power of social media, I help agents like you all the time. I am doing it right now myself, but I also help agents build and scale their business modern way. So feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email. And it would be my absolute pleasure to connect with you. Rooting for you, wishing you good luck. And you've got this. Take care. Bye. That you showed